Yeah. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was Shelly, it wasn't me. So let's get into the, uh, I'm just going to catch up on the, the forum from week two and make sure everybody's kind of keeping, keeping up on it. Okay, I had a hell of a time getting my photos to attach. Well, uh, Taylor, it looks like you pulled it off. Sure, not at all. Uh, first of our paper and plastic, mostly paper towels, deliciousness and plastic waste from food scraps and compost. Okay, so just looking at this guy. Um, so that metal cap, you know, I'm just going to do a little mental triage here. You know, the, the metal cap can go in a metal stream. Um, I've been putting my paper, my, my, you know, biologically, organically soiled paper right into the compost. I, you know, there might be some chlorine in the bleached paper that might be an issue. We'll have to figure that out when we get to the cellulose part. Um, this is thin film plastic, and I've just done a long conversation with Patrick Brown. That can be baled with other thin film plastics and go into a waste to energy stream. I don't think there are any metals in there. Um, the liner itself, um, I've gotten rid of all my garbage liners. Um, you know, my, my compost bucket is just a bucket of compost, and I dump it right in the earth. All the other you know, waste streams that I have, I just, I, I go through and sort by hand. So I've gotten rid of the liners, but anyway, this looks like a pretty small and tidy uh, stream to take care of. Okay, so here's your conventional recyclables. This is going to be a challenge right here. If this shows up at the University of Montana's recycling center, it will all go in the garbage. We learned that if there's a glass bottle in the, in the recycling stream at the university, just for safety, nobody wants to cut their finger on a broken piece of glass and then be bleeding all over, you know, you don't want to get blood on the recyclables. No, I mean, I mean <laughs> um, it's just unsanitary. So uh, the, the glass really needs to go into its own stream. There's nobody out there. There, there really is nobody out there in, in Missoula, Montana, sorting this for you. You, have, you must take it upon yourself. Yes, Brian. There is this little mini guide. Little oh, yeah. Um, I found this, like, laying on the ground. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No. Um, no. <laughs> But there's a, at the, towards the back, there's a, uh, an article on why glass is not recycled. Yeah, Could yeah. you read this? Yeah. Okay. And it says here that it would take 76 tons of recycled glass to save the same amount of energy as recycling one ton of aluminum. Let's, let's get to the glass oh. later, though. But, but for sure, po post, that, post a link to that on the website, okay. and we'll, we'll look at it. It's just, it just kind of sums it up it nicely why. And we're going to do embodied energy oh. today, too. Okay. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Okay, so cardboard, separate stream, perfect. And the university's got a fantastic um, baler for the, for the cardboard. Okay, so good, good post. So this is, I'd call this kind of like three, three streams, but unfortunately, this guy's got to get separated before it heads out the door, based on what we've seen from um, you know, conventional recycling here in Missoula. All right, so Priscilla. Trash chute, I, I, I'm happy to learn about the trash chute. Um, yeah. Only discovered the containers later. Uh, good, okay. Yeah, and yesterday a guy was, the desk, desk party, recycling uh, the dinner showing. Oh, really? Okay, so you were, you were sort of showing them where the recycling actually happens. Yeah. Um, okay, so this all looks pretty good. The, the styrofoam is an issue, but um, I've been uh, hoarding, stockpiling styrofoam over at the hive, so I'm happy to take any, um, any styrofoam. We'll, we'll find a market for it before the uh, semester's up. Gosh, Priscilla, that's a lot of cardboard you used in one week. No, just, that's not all you. <laughs> My goodness, you're really... Uh, so these are so these look like garbage cans, but you can see the recycling symbol on the side. Obviously, um, um, another another thing I learned though, this was a little distressing. So you know, on top of the fact that we spend three hundred eighty thousand dollars on our, our landfill, twenty thousand dollars in fines. Those fines come from when the guys in the garbage truck have to get out and lift something even as simple as this into the back of the truck because yeah. the truck is designed just to grab the grab the dumpster, tip it up, and go. If the dumpster's not being used properly, meaning that stuff is not in the dumpster, we get hit uh, 
even more. I also learned that cardboard is, is fairly forgiving. Uh, you know, if a milk carton ends up in there, a little bit of wax on it, it's not the end of the world. And obviously, you got some tape in there. There's some staples. This stuff gets ground down and all the way down to it, its pulp state. So, sure, it's a little heavier on the equipment. It'd be nice, you know, be nicer to the recycling stream to get rid of the plastics, the metals, all that stuff. But on the other hand, it's going through a big industrial process, and, and the cardboard is a little more uh, forgiving. Okay, there's your office paper, newspapers and magazines treated differently than the office paper that's already already gone through that bleaching process. Well, so two well, different things. Well, one more, that one about the paper yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess they're taking color in there as well. Aluminum. Um, so these these things are actually being sorted at the recycling station. I've got the pictures on my phone. I, I still need to upload them. That's looking pretty tidy. I don't know, is that garbage or is that new? Or yeah, so we throw in the trash chute uh -huh. and then goes to this container. Okay. Not recycled. Are these containers sitting at the bottom of the trash chute then? Is it just yeah. like drops right in there and someone's monitoring that? Okay. This is at Miller Hall? Yes. Okay. okay. And, and Probably nobody's bothering to touch that stuff after it goes in there. I don't, I don't yeah, know. yeah. Okay. And this is mine for my room. Okay, all right. Um, so all the time I'm just like nice. taking the cardboard. And yeah. So what I've been doing with the ice cream, there's a little plastic ring on there. I just I chuck all of my um, food container waste into the right sink in my sink. And so when I'm doing the dishes. I just let this stuff kind of soak there on its own a little bit. I'll peel that plastic label off. I'll stick that cardboard. I'll, I'll put this paper into the same cardboard stream. Is this um, thin film, that like a thin film plastic? Yeah. So I'm going to ball that up and send it right off to my buddy, um, Patrick Brown at Inter International Biomass at three cents a pound. And that's, what we're gonna, that's some of the math we're going to do today, too, on embodied energy. Nice. Oh. Uh, and there apparently, there, well, there, there are some pretty strict laws on medical waste. All the, all the sharps, so-called so sharps, mm -hmm. have to be ground up, even if they're going into some waste stream so that those needles are not used again. I also had a nice conversation with Patrick Brown about a um, uh, pyrolysis system that we're going to try to put in at St. Pat's. And so, yeah, the metals themselves won't get burned, but that's kind of part of your ash when you send uh, that type of waste through this uh, pyrolysis. Okay, well, that was good. Thank you, Priscilla. Nice picture. Was that, how long ago was that taken? Was that in, in Brazil, your photo? With, with the nice green in the, okay. <laughs> All right, what, what? It's either that or like somewhere in the UC with all their tropical plants. <laughs> What's your icon? Is that the sun? Wow, man, that's pretty intense. Okay. I like that. Yeah. All right, so here's Jason's. Yeah, I had to just do a, a word document. It's all right. That doesn't matter. No, it, it's you know Moodle's Moodle's flexible. PDF, JPEG. Write your own. First step in our waste stream: compost bucket. Look at that. Is it five gallons? Three gallons? It's just um, actually it's a the movie popcorn buckets. You okay, like gallon and a half kind of deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Movie popcorn bucket. Okay, so there's your plastics. Looks like newspapers here. And is this kind of on its way to the Broadway? I usually go to Pacific. Yeah, okay. Okay. Next step. Um, she's doing some shredding, taking glass to Target. Yep, that's kind of what my boxes end up looking like. Uh, oh, okay, nice. All right. And then would you would you compost that cage litter afterwards? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, right. That's one thing I've been trying to work on with Martin No Runner. He's he's um, just putting in some recycling um, 
stations at the Matador apartment complex over here. And so what I'm trying to convince him to do is to actually have you know a dedicated compost stream. So after these um, after these cardboards went in with the litter, he just chuck it out there in that in that compost yeah, stream. I think it would compost well. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, shredded is going to compost way better. Okay, e-waste, um, Best Buy and Pacific take it. That's great. Who gave that? Where did you just get rid of that? So, oh, we're going out fast. So, um, so Shelly's working on getting her own PLLC going so she can actually accept this from you rather than doing it on a gray market. Oh, my God. Right? I, I mean, I don't know. Are you? Maybe not. I mean, it's got to be a... So, um, so this is kind of this is kind of what you're left with. Is that a, is that a full week's worth of worth of garbage, if you will? Um, probably about a week, a week and a half. We'll bend in, we'll bend in, we'll okay. Um, so, do you have curbside or not? We have like big black dumpsters. Oh, with the apartment. Yeah. Okay. So, so your um, so you don't have you have no real financial incentive to recycle because your your apartment um, uh, lease your is is your 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 waste is included in your in your right. right right okay which they used to have recycling services but I don't know if they did they don't do it Well, um, again, Martin No Runner is expanding his business, and may maybe you could encourage your landlord to uh, enlist his services. Like I said, um, Matador is, is currently set up a recycling station. Like Homeward is one of the Homeward complexes. Oh. They're usually pretty good about trying to do a lot of that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm right out of reserve. Wherever the other train tracks and the old pass used to be. Big Bay Barn. Trash stuff, Tyne and Connor, one day ago. Here is my waste. <laughs> Since living in Montana, I've been accumulating more. Yeah, all of us. Uh, soiled tissues, paper towels, as well as nighttime disposable diapers. Yeah, the diapers are, the diapers are tough. Um, yeah, challenging in this age of convenience, I hear you. So... Um, the one thing, and, and I have not explored this technology to any extent, but one thing I have heard about uh, soiled diapers, believe it or not, somebody is able to take those, um, take the biological waste out of it, take the plastics out of it, and then what you're left, left with is this slurry of gel. And that's basically what uh, these diapers are. It's an absorbent gel. Mm -hmm. And someone has turned that absorbent gel into a fire retardant product. So the gel from the baby diapers is sprayed on the million dollar house in the middle of the forest and it doesn't burn down. Mm -hmm. So every last bit of it, you know, the, the organics uh, go back to the soil, the plastics go to a waste of energy, and then the uh, the other materials, the gel materials, used as a, as a fire retardant. So there's a, there's a stream for everything. That happened quite a while back. That was like 20 years ago. Yep. Some yep. guy discovered that. Yep. Okay. Cool. So he's got something set up for the kids. Ground, coffee grounds, veggie waste. Nice. That's obviously going to the compost. Nice. Oh, cool. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I'd like to see those charcoal sheets. Yeah, it sounds like he's got a composter in the shed or something. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, look at that. There you go, man. I like that. Well, and I get something like this from my daughter's room. You know, the tags off the clothing and the broken clothes hanger and uh, the abandoned notebook. And so I just, um, I go through it on my, my bench. Neat, thank you. That's a good one. Well, these, these are really good posts. I, I um, uh, don't have a lot of garbage. I don't throw away a lot. Okay, so three three bins there. Aluminum. Um, ooh, look at that. Okay, so you've got metals coming out. Is this is that? Am I interpreting this correctly? Like. 
Yep, yep, okay. Oh, nice, okay. So you get, you've got ferrous, you've got copper, you've got gold, so it's mainly just te separate streams of different types of metals. Am I looking at that right? Okay. Perfect. Well, like that jar on the right, blue lid. This guy. That I can sell for. I can get thirty dollars a pound for the, the capacitors, which there's a lot. Of, it takes a lot. But so, I almost have a pound in that jar. So thirty bucks a pound in the capacitors, and what's what's the metal in there that's valuable? Uh, Some precious, some precious metals, some base metals. Yep. Yeah. That's thirty bucks a pound. It's almost a pound. Thirty bucks a pound is not too bad. Beats most other conventional but recyclables. Take, it, the minimum is ten pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I got a little Still. go. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as we get into the semester, we're going to start looking at some of these bigger international uh, deals. Thirty bucks for like two hundred pounds. Continuing picking them out of the tweezers. Yeah. So you're going after the gold, silver, nice. Well, I'm, just, I'm just separating all the components that are on the board. Once I separate them, then some of them I, I know what I'm going to do with them. The other ones I don't have a bunker for. You're just kind of like just stockpiling. Them. Got it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Okay. Pop grounds paper. So this, so some of your coffee grounds are going in the, and this is just going out into the landfill. Is that right? Yep. Okay. I'm, li I'm living in an apartment complex. I don't have any room to stretch out really. Yeah. But I, I try to, um, I usually try to buy all my stuff secondhand to begin with. So mm -hmm. I don't get a lot of packaging. Nope, not much packaging. Yeah. And I always, it's funny because it all ends up back at Goodwill anyway. Yep. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. Well, in Goodwill, I mean, like I said, they, they, I think they've got a really good uh, fiber reclamation um, stream. And then I just try to, you know, I mean, I always pack my lunch in my... Well, bring, bring your coffee grounds in. I've, I've been, I've been uh, keeping a little compost bucket. In fact, it's sitting right out there on my bicycle right now, so you can... When well, i got to follow through on that, um, that bin business, if we're interested in that bin thing, I think I, I could probably swing it so we could get that composter bin. Chef yeah. said, chef said if we were willing to put it in the bulk and he might go for it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. So I would love the place to put my, my coffee ground. Yeah, I, I, I have been, um, well, it, there's so many different places to compost. There's, there's even a little garden over here at Sentinel. They have, they have a compost pile, too. You can just leave it over oh, there. Oh, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Absolutely. Well, they do a lot of their own cooking over there. Yeah. All right, this is kind of this is kind of neat. Our, this is our backyard compost pile. Big yogurt container, five gallon bucket, two three times a day. Wow, that's impressive. Um, oh, so he's got something growing out of his compost. Yeah, I, I you, you see that the volunteer seed once in a while just goes for it. I like that. Yeah. 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 No, I I, I agree with this. Uh, Will. Um, my my backyard ends up looking a lot like this too. We did kind of cave and, and you know do the lawn thing, but um, yeah, our our chickens would be here kind of pecking through things. And, yeah. Nice. You don't kill your chickens, do you? I no, I'm not going to kill my chickens. I'm die of old age. When appropriate, there we go. Fasteners, yeah. So it looks like he's doing you know. Several streams here, different materials. Recycling center, cardboard, there we go. Yes, yeah, so this is pretty standard. Yep, taking the bottles to, to Bayern, right? So it, it sounds like, uh, ah, here's a good question. Also, I received a couple textbooks in these bubble-wrapped envelopes through the mail. Um, I've been taking a lot of these materials over to the shipping depot. They'll take them. There's bubble wrap in there, and they'll just 
tear it up, grind it up, and stick it in with somebody who brings in some huge thing to mail. It, you know, if you're worried about privacy, you might, you know, mark out your name on it. But this is just bulk packaging material, and that's all it is. So when we talk a little bit more about artifacts versus materials, I would say this is still a an artifact. It is still a packaging material. So, you know, tear it up, bag it up, stick it, and, and take it down to the shipping depot. They'll take it. They'll use it and, again, you know, pack up somebody's big TV that they're shipping to New Mexico or whatever. That, that's what I would do with it. Um, another option, I'm sure that if, if this ended up in a waste to energy stream, it's not going to be a big deal. It's got cellulose, that's what wood's made of, and it's got uh, hydrocarbons, that's plastic, and if it's, again, burned responsibly, it's a reasonable waste to energy in my opinion. So artifact if you can, and then waste to energy as, a, as, a, um, as an out. Good, okay, a couple more, and then I gotta get I gotta get down into the lecture here. I really do have some pretty cool stuff to cover today. Attach two files in my response, upload, cabin in our kitchen. Nice, okay, right? Trash, blah, 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 garbage, blah, blah, blah. dumpster, uh, plastic car, okay. Uh, north side neighborhood. Yeah, cool. So I guess I don't see um, I don't see the, any any pictures here, Joe. But I, I would like to sort of see what's left over in the actual so-called garbage stream because that's really what I'm uh, you know a big point of what I'm trying to do in this course is direct that redirect that last little bit of stuff that no one quite seems to know what to do with. Okay, so here um, toothpaste. So that you know that's that's plastic right there. One thing I really want to figure out is whether or not there is enough metal in these tubes like this to, to make a capacitor um, and, and how we might go back and just use it as is. Again, use it as a, uh, an artifact because what you've got on the outside is plastic. If there's metal on the inside, obviously it's going to be, it's going to wreck your plastic recycling stream. But I would love to see us be able to use these um, uh, composite materials that have metal on one side, plastic on the other, as an actual electrical component. I think it's, it would be an interesting, and I've got a bunch stockpiled over in the lab, so if anybody wants to tackle that problem, yeah. Uh, Sean's like, yeah, what don't you have over there? But uh, uh, it looks like some other plastic here, and again, I think that's waste to energy, like a good waste to energy uh, stream that, that we could look into doing with that. These are all conventional. That's probably a number one plastic, P-E-T-E, -E, relatively high value. And then, let's see, metal sheets, home resource, perfect, yeah. And then I, whatever home resource, like whatever metal home resource doesn't have, they'll, um, they'll put in the Pacific recycling right there on site. I actually took that to Pacific Steel the other day. Yeah? I need $6 for it. Six bucks? Yeah, I got okay. 300 some pounds. Really, man, okay. Better than a poke in the eye. Nice, nice. So, t tell me again. You got six um, bucks for three hundred pounds. I, I think roughly, yeah. Yeah. So I, six I, divided by three. Two cents a pound for steel. Is that kind of what it was? Yeah. Ten. ten. Yeah. Yeah. I got three bucks. Mhm. Mm yeah. Seems a little low, but those guys got to make money too, right? Okay. And then Maria, I think maybe I must have looked at hers already, right? I think we did that last time. Yeah, we did. Okay, everybody, thanks, thanks for posting. I have, have not really done all of my homework because I, I do not have the images from our trip to uh, Eddie's shop posted. And, I, I, well, I did show you a few from my books. So I showed you some of the waste stream at, at my own house. So I guess I've, I've, I've at least shared that. All right, let's pause it here. And then I want to get next into uh, some actual embodied energy calculations. And that, that's kind of where the money starts to hit the road in terms of um, how, how one does make money on this type of thing. So I'm going to pause here, and then we'll uh, come back and do some uh, embodied energy.
which is the topic of this week.